Tokyo Say they know me though Cause I'll be putting in work Commit my life to rebirth Well respected cause that's my word And I'm sure you heard About a new sound gone round She might have left my hood But she was born in my town Hey everybody, it's K9 with ETS Tactical and Survival. And if you're watching this video, that means you have made the mental decision with yourself and your family to protect each other. Or as the head of the household to protect your family and property. So I'm glad that you made that decision and you're ready to continue on on the steps of how to properly prepare for a home invasion, intruder, murderer, rapist, whatever the case may be. Okay? Now, once you've made that decision, we'll go ahead and get into that next step. Making a plan. Why plan? Well, first of all, if you wing something like this, you're going to fail. People are going to get hurt, possibly die. We don't want that. By making a plan, it's no different than with your job. Guidelines, SOPs and SOGs of how you are going to go about doing that job. So that way you get the same end result each time. It's no different with this. You're going to make a plan. So everybody's on the same page regardless of what the situation is. Now, one thing you need to consider before making a plan of action if the intruder's already in the house is look into your different methods of prevention. Now, not everybody has money to go out and get a big fancy alarm system where somebody monitors it all the time. That's not feasible for everybody. There's still other ways to prevent. It's not going to eliminate, but prevent home invasions. Some of these examples would be extra lighting around your house, eliminating dark spots for these suspects or criminals to be able to actually get up close to your house without being seen. Another one is installing security cameras. This is becoming more and more popular in homes other than just businesses. And the prices of them have come down quite a bit. You can get a basic Ford channel with the DVR on places like eBay for 100 to $150. And they have night vision and everything else. Uh, you pay a little bit more for your PTZ, your pan, tilt, and zoom cameras. But in the end, they're worth it. You can actually program them to patrol across your property on its own, scanning back and forth. <clears throat> now, once you've kind of figured out ways to help prevent it, like I said, you're not going to eliminate it. So you still got to come up with a plan. Once you have your ultimate goal and your concept of what your purpose is, the first thing you need to do is find out what your local laws are. Your local, your state, and your federal laws. Because it serves no purpose if you've protected your family for that moment, but you're sitting in prison. Or you've got such a major lawsuit on you, you lose everything in the end, and it would have been cheaper just to let the person take all your belongings. So learn your laws. If you do it properly, you're also going to have more help from your local law enforcement. You're going to be on the right side of the law. Talk to your local law enforcement. Talk to attorneys and say, Hey, I'm deciding to do home self-defense to protect my loved ones. Can you tell me what the laws are so that way I'm protected by the law, I can protect my family, and not become a criminal just like the person that invaded my home? So, again, 
please learn your laws. Now, it's in the Constitution. It's our God-given right to protect our family. So nothing will change that. Now, the next step is to actually make your plan. Now, when you do this, the first thing you need to do is put it down on paper. Why? Because when you're faced with a high intense situation, your adrenaline shoots through the roof. You get tunnel vision. Your motor skills start failing. It's a proven fact. And without continuous proper training, it's going to happen every single time. Okay? By you writing it down, you know exactly what to do each time you practice and you prepare for this. If you just go winging it and off your mind, you're not going to follow the same concept every single time. You're going to get off track, and in the end, you're not going to efficiently protect your family and face this particular intruder or home invader. Now, once you've decided, okay, I'm going to make a plan, Set a day for the whole family to be around. The reason why I say the whole family is because everybody with the mental and physical capacity has to be on the same page. If not, when that situation happens, it is going to be a giant mess and people are going to get hurt and killed. If you're all on the same page, you're all working together, and you can get to that ultimate goal. Now, when you sit down with them, remove any distractions. No TV, turn off your cell phones. You can live without that for an hour or two hours or however long it takes you to really get into this plan. Because in the end, your life is a lot more important than a TV show. Or a text conversation or a game on your cell phone. Remove all your distractions. Make this your priority for that short period of time that you're planning. Okay? Now, just because you wrote it down does not mean it's etched in stone. You can always make alterations over time. Now, again, the whole reason why you want your family to be on the same page is it's like a machine with a lot of gears inside if one of those gears or two of those gears however many are not in sync with that main gear you cannot have a machine work it's going to fall apart it's going to become worse but if all the gears are synced perfect together they're clean they're oiled Everything runs smoothly and exactly how you expect it to work. It's no different. Having your family all on the same page is going to allow you to move quick, proficient, and one concept to always remember is time is life. Every second that ticks by is a moment of life you can't get back. Same thing when you're facing somebody that's in your home. You're not always going to be in bed. You could be at work, your wife at home, cleaning house and somebody breaks in there. Or you could be all together watching your family favorite TV show. Your family favorite. And somebody break in. Okay? You need to all be on the same page. I cannot stress that enough. Alright, if you've got a member of your family that's not on point with it, not in agreement, have them watch the news. Every single news cast that I see, some house has gotten burglarized. So, have them all work together. You're a family, you're one, work that way. Plan that way, prepare that way, and practice that way, okay? 
Now, as you're making these plans, what I recommend is a minimum of three plans, three different plans. The reason why is because no burglar is the same. No invasion or break-in is the same. And even though it may start off going just as you had planned, it will alter. It will change. So you need those other plans, plan B, plan C, or however many you can come up with. So that way if things get off track, okay, well this is plan B, let's go from there and still have a chance to survive. The more plans, the more options you have, the greater percentage of a chance you have to properly protecting your family and surviving. Okay, now it's up to you on how detailed you want this plan. You can do it generic or you can get really in depth to locations and everything else, which is what I recommend. Now, you need to learn multiple things and I'm going to do a video on, on each of these so that way we can really properly explain it and show you. One of them is know your house. Know your blind spots. Now you may say, I live in my house, I know it. But have you really stopped and checked what all places could a burglar hide behind if he knows I'm coming to look for him. Keep this in mind. These burglars, these murders and rapists, they plan this. They've been up. They've had a meal. They're wide awake. They may have even been studying your routine. You, however, are caught off guard. Or you just woke up. You're not going to be as on point that initial second as your invader or your burglar or your criminal. So know your house. Know exactly where the lights are. Which lights are easy to get on? Sometimes just turning on a light. Let's say you live upstairs in a second story house. The burglar's downstairs. But you have a light switch that turns on that stairwell light. A lot of times just that will scare them away. But also be prepared if now they know where you're at. Know every nook and cranny of your house. Not only where they can hide, but if you get into a conflict with them, a confrontation, you are able to do cover and concealment. And we'll do a video on the difference between the two. Okay? So, no your house. Choose a safe room. Again, we'll do a video on each of these. A safe room. What you feel is a safe and practical retreat or cover spot in your house. If, let's say, one of the, the kids' bedrooms, good sturdy room, a possible exit through a window or such the door can be locked those are all things you want to look at for a safe house but as you make your other plans your plan B plan C it might be the neighbor's house it might be your barn or whatever the case may be it don't always have to have the same place in every plan that's why I said the more plans, the better. So come up with a safe, safe room, all right? Because that way, if you know there's an invader in your home, you know what his intent is, while you're being offensive, your family can take cover until you or law enforcement shows up and gives the all clear, okay? We'll go into a little bit later on how to choose what is a good safe room and how to act and handle yourself once you're inside that safe room so that will come up in um in the later part okay 
don't just learn your house. Learn your property. Learn if you've got land, your layouts, your terrain. Because if you're able to get away from that house, if you know somebody's in there and they've already proven their intent is to hurt you, know where to run if you can get out of the house. Where to go? A neighbor's, a clubhouse, a spot in the woods on the property line next to a road. Learn all these things, okay? Now, you need to select a time to practice. Why practice? It's no different than a fire drill. They teach you as a little child in school, have your family have a fire plan. If your house catches fire, what do you do? And I've seen in my careers a lot of difference between those who had a fire plan and prepared to those that don't. Once that prepared, by the time we show up to put out the fire, nine out of ten times, they're already outside waiting in a safe location. The ones that weren't prepared is where you start to get victims. Or we have to put men and women, these responders, at risk to go in. Now, we do it because that's our job. That's what we love. We're there to help. But if it's unnecessary and can be prevented, why not do it? So, the concept that you go into a fire drill or fire plan is no different than this. Okay? When you have that plan, you practice it. Because that way it becomes second nature. It's embedded into you. You know without a doubt, despite the adrenaline, despite what's going on, you know how to react. You know where to go, what to look for, and what to avoid. So practices. It don't have to be even a weekly thing. Choose a day out of the month. Change it up a little bit. Have your scenarios change, but practice, okay? Practice makes accurate, accurate makes proficient, and of course proficient makes you deadly. When I say deadly, I'm not saying deadly as far as go out and kill somebody. I'm talking about deadly as that burglar didn't have a chance against your family. You were prepared. You knew what to do. You executed it flawlessly even if there was flaws in the plan because of the situation changing you had plan b c d and so on to be able to adjust and now all of y'all have survived okay so another thing you also need to consider and this is something that i don't want you to jump on i want you to really think deep in it and i'll explain why later in one of the other videos is in your plan, are you going to introduce weaponry, a firearm, a knife, whatever the case may be? Are you going to introduce that as a form of protection? Now me, I have multiple forms of protection. I have them all throughout my house. So if I can't reach one, I've got another one that I can reach. So at any time I'm able to have a tool, a weapon to protect myself and my family. If you do this, you have to decide to be proficient, to be knowledgeable. If you use a firearm and it jams, what do you do? What type of ammunition do you need so it doesn't penetrate through a wall and you end up shooting your own family in the midst of trying to protect them. You need to think about that. And again, that goes back to also learn your laws. What can you have? What can you do? So you're protected not only physically and mentally, but legally as well. So ask yourself that. And then ask yourself, if I fall in the midst of dealing with this perpetrator, this murderer, rapist, 
Do I have the type of weapons for my family to use? Do they know how to use it? Can they use it? If it jams on them, do they know what to do with it? Some people say, I want to introduce weaponry, but only for myself. And that's fine. But if you're the only one who's going to introduce weaponry into your plan, then you need to be the only one that's offensive. And let your family be defensive, still doing their part. You need to take all this into consideration, and it's a lot to take in and plan. But that's why we write things down, we talk about it, we all come to one solution with multiple possibilities. So, in closing, you already made the decision to protect your family. Do you really want to chance anything on your family's safety and well-being, physically and mentally? Or if faced with a situation, do you want to look back and say, I know I did everything. I covered every angle. I did all the types of training I could. I practiced all the times that I was able to. I committed to it. Do you you want to be able to look back and say, I did everything. Even if somebody might fall victim, at least you know you gave it your all. Dealing with crime, intruders, emotions, combat. Combat don't have to be just for military and law enforcement. If that person's coming at you with a gun or knife after they've tried to rob your house, now they're coming after you, that's a form of combat. It's not always pretty. That's where getting your mind right in the beginning stage comes into effect. I hope this helps you. I'm making a plan. Again, if you need any help with anything, write me, let me know. I'll do what I can to help you out. The next step that we're going to do is actually breaking down the different sections of that plan. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to actually devise a plan, the examples, get a little bit more in depth. And then after that, we'll start going into a little bit more of the, the fun preparation stuff. So I hope to see you in the next videos. I appreciate you staying with me this long. And as always, stay safe, be smart, and God bless. See you on the next one.